For all of us, it was just like another day in the lab. But the day started a whole lot earlier, and there were people paying attention to the activities, and it was, it was just strangely high. On Saturday, December 16, 2006, a small group of us got up at 2 o'clock in the morning, made a short drive out to the satellite dish in the Stanford Hills to watch a rocket take off into space. Though the shuttle was big news at the time, we chose to watch this early launch as it was carrying a NASA satellite that we were given responsibility of operating. For me, it all started about two and a half years ago when Dr. Chris Kitts of Santa Clara University extended an invitation for me to complete my master's and work on a NASA Ames project that would cover my tuition and be the testbed for my research. Seeing as how it would be foolish to turn down the offer, I signed up and the games began. The small satellite project, GeneSat-1, called for us to create a software suite that would allow us to send commands to the satellite and perform analysis on the telemetry data. So we teamed up with Tom Van Buskirk and Kevin Weiler, two talented computer engineering undergrads, who developed a software system with the capability of operating the spacecraft through a satellite dish from anywhere in the world as part of their senior design project. It was a lot to ask of them, but at the close of their senior year, they delivered a system that was thoroughly tested, functional, and changed very little over the next year and a half. The journey really only just began with the departure of Tom and Kevin. Along the way, we came across Ignacio Moss, who had been working on the project through Stanford. Ignacio, who is an expert in the black magic I call radio frequency, came to Santa Clara to work on his master's, help on the project, and take the lead on the satellite communication. Phelps Williams, currently a senior computer engineering student, came on and did a lot of great work on the amateur ground station that sits on the roof of the engineering building. His software and general skills have been more than life-saving. Paul Mahachek and Giovanni Minnelli, both mechanical engineering graduate students, weren't initially involved with the project, but they joined a refurbished dish. They learned how to operate and point the dish, and they can do it with their eyes closed now. The time spent in development and training all came together at 3 o'clock on December 17th when we positively contacted GeneSat1. After the cheers died down in the little trailer parked below the dish and the gratuitous champagne bottle was popped, we continued the job. Over the course of the next month, we started the onboard biology experiment, collected critical spacecraft data, and proved that small satellites are a powerful platform for conducting scientific research in space. Along with the standard lessons, what to do and what not to do, GeneSat provided us with countless opportunities to gain new knowledge and build a strong relationship with the leader in science and technology. GeneSat also allowed undergraduates to experience advanced engineering and research. Our valuable experiences on the project have given us dynamic feedback for running a successful field robotics program. Our team, past and present, has done a great job of continuing the success of the Robotics Systems Lab at Santa Clara University. NASA Ames team, to me, seemed ecstatic about the work done by our team. Not only because we're cheap, but because we do a good job and has assigned the lab to operations for Pharmasat, the next small satellite project scheduled to launch in the coming year.